Hello, my name is James Clay. I work for the University of Edinburgh's Talbot Rice Gallery, and I'm the curator of our current exhibition, which is called Pine's Eye. Pine's Eye features 12 international artists and runs across our distinctive spaces. As it's currently closed due to the 2020 pandemic, I've decided to make a series of short videos that look at each of the artists in the exhibition in turn. This week, we're going to look at the work of painter Kevin Mooney. We've got four of Kevin's paintings dispersed across the exhibition. They are Orbs and Apparition, Trickster, and Peasant. What initially drew my attention to Kevin's paintings was their sense of mischief and playfulness. And I don't think we should underestimate how important those qualities are when it comes to thinking about ecology. Our logical mindset, our progress, has led us towards environmental crisis. So in order to think ecologically, we are going to have to turn towards tricksters and magicians and people who can show us other ways of being in the world. As I got to know Kevin's work better, I realised that there are also other histories and other stories um, that they were speaking about. Kevin is an artist who's very interested in understanding the, the lineage, the heritage that he um, takes on as a painter. I suppose the, the, all of the paintings in some ways could be described as uh, portraits or heads, um, albeit kind of partial or incomplete, um, but they could also be read as um, uh, portraits where the, the gaze is returned to the viewer. Um, and there was something in that, um, the humour and the mischief of that confrontation that kind of interested me. Um, so the materials for, for making the work are um, jute, which is a kind of a, a rough canvas, and oil paint and varnish. So these, uh, these materials are very traditional, so they, um, I suppose using those traditional, those traditional kind of materials kind of, um, I suppose it kind of, it kind of locates the work within a, a tradition of painting and within, a, within an art history. Um, and I suppose trying to trying to locate your practice in a in an art history for an Irish painter is is kind of problematic and we've you know we've kind of long long gaps in our um, in our art history where there's kind of almost no, no record of um, any uh, any visual culture here you know in Ireland in the 17th century under the rule of Oliver Cromwell the situation was really dire about a third of the population disappeared. This was through disease, through conflict, but also through, uh, as Kevin describes it, this mass exodus of people um, being going or being sent uh, to Caribbean islands to work on the plantations there. So trying to engage with an art history, you kind of have to have to reimagine it. And I suppose you, um, where I was kind of looking to kind of reimagine it was in um, in terms of emigration. Um, I suppose the the loss of um, visual culture and the loss of an art history is um, is is completely related to um, to to emigrating people uh, to people leaving the island, you know, to leaving the country. So some of, some of the research that's that's uh, found its way into the work has uh, included um, historical links between Ireland and the Caribbean from 17th and 18th centuries. Um, so the, this is a kind of, um, I suppose, um, you know, not very well known and kind of underexplored kind of chapter in our, in our history. Um, and I suppose the, the work that's in the exhibition in Edinburgh, um, you know, could um, be interpreted as being um, as reimagining kind of folk art objects and artifacts that came out of the collision of um, 
Irish culture and West African culture and um, indigenous Caribbean culture um, in 17th and 18th centuries. This must have been a hugely traumatic experience for many of these people. In fact, Irish people were nicknamed red legs in the Caribbean because their fair skin just couldn't deal with the climate. And many people died either on the journey or when they reached the plantations. In fact, Cromwell, in a, a very sort of divisive mood, started to send children out to places like Jamaica in the hope that they might be able to adapt better to the climate and situation there. And the scale of this repopulation was huge. 25% of Jamaican people now claim um, Irish ancestry. So what Kevin's doing here is he's trying to provoke us to show us this kind of void in our memory, this space of forgetting where all these things happened. And all these people leaving Ireland wasn't just an exodus of people, but it was an exodus of ideas and of identities and of cultures as well. I think that's why when we look at Kevin's paintings there's something quite disturbing about them because they seem to describe this kind of absence or void. Kevin hesitates to use the word portraits and I think it's right to do so because portraits are often about trying to really show someone's identity and status and personhood. It's a you know, a fully formed being surrounded by all the possessions that define them as a human being in, in the social world. Whereas these paintings, they feel um, dis disembodied, they feel cut up, they feel fragmented somehow. 